All right, I got my blade on my shaft and had a really nice looking motor. Ooh, look at the rust on that guy. So now I somehow need to make the motor spin this around. Okay, what kind of drive do I want? There are two main things I'm considering right now. Not a chain drive because uh, the chain will overheat. At, oh, maybe I should double check the, the speed rating of these chains. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go on the Oh, the internet's so annoying. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't wanna use a chain drive. I think I want to use a direct drive, like connect the motor directly to the shaft so there's no gearing, because that just takes out a whole, you know, chunk of moving parts. So let me, let me start messing with this and see what's going to be involved in connecting the motor directly to the end here. I have this on here and I have this, which bolts onto there. Because this was connected to a boat and it had a, a shaft coming out here to a propeller or whatever. This is a one inch hole. This here is one and a quarter noodles. So, all right, let's just take this sprocket off first and see what's under here. Maybe I'll get super lucky and someone, yeah, right. All right, no. all right let's get this thing off. Probably around that's... Why does it feel like there's no... Wait a minute. There is totally no screw in there. No screw in that one either. Alright. So, <laughs> will this just... Oh. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. What's hilarious? It just came right off. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, if only that was a skinnier thing. It sure would be nice if this fit on there. So I either need to carve this skinnier or make the hole bigger. Uh, which one is easier? Well, easiest would just be to have a belt drive and <laughs> make a belt that, or a pulley that fits on here or buy one or whatever. Yeah. I, I want to try to do direct drive because that's going to be the most efficient and I think the the speed should be about right. Hold on a minute. I could turn this into one of these. That wouldn't be that hard. Because this has the right size hole and I'm presuming this is all you know machined pretty flat here or at least you know made in the factory to be 90 degrees alized. Just putting the hole, yeah, changing the hole in this is going to be kind of a pain in the butt. Well, all, all I have to do with this is, you know, cut a circle around here, which I don't even have to do a good job of, you know, just to basically get that. And then <clears throat> make this, this groove in here that will fit this little ring. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be a groove. It doesn't even have to be a groove that goes all the way to the inside. It just has to, just need... Something that'll fit along this this edge here. So yeah, I just have to cut a groove in there. All right, I think for my first try, I'm gonna try carving this hole bigger. And my little cutter thing here to get it in there and cut without the bottom edge of this hitting. I need to file a little bit of this off. I mean, it should be able to get in there and carve. <laughs> uh, I just took a little bit off there. Hopefully I can carve it. Yeah. Oh. seem so tough except oh, I can only reach about a centimeter in there. I have to 
aim this so it's straight and get this coming out of kind of an angle. See how deep in there I can carve it. It looks like looks like I can definitely do it. I did just sharpen this with a diamond bit. Alright, I mean a diamond file, whatever you call it. Alright, let me see if I can get this further in there. How far do I need it to get in? At least like two centimeters would be the minimum, I think. Two and a half centimeters. Alright, that should be maybe tight enough. Mm -hmm. I just shaved a little bit off there. It's nowhere near as much as it needs. I'll just have to do more and once I start getting close, take really good measurements. Once I start getting really close, check it on the pipe. All right, so let's keep, keep going here. One point two five noodle units. Man, whoever sent this to me, thank you so much. They asked me to put one on my Amazon wish list. And I picked this one out because it doesn't have batteries. Man, I, isn't that awesome? I love this thing. Just check the inside down right there. And I've, I'm obviously gonna do this off camera too so I can do a better job. Uh, yeah, I still have a bunch to go. All right. Okay, according to my little measurey thing here, I just took about 15 thousandth of a noodle off this, and I needed to do 250 thousandths. So 15 up to 250, so I need to do it a bunch more times. Okay. Need some oil in there again. Oh, I'm like halfway there. Nice. All right, let's keep going. I'm doing this real slow because this, this is sticking out pretty far. I don't want to put much pressure on it. So I'm just cutting a tiny bit at a, at a time. Ooh, according to my thing, I'm like five, three, three or four thousandths of an inch too big. So let's... Go check that on the actual thing. <laughs> cool. Man. I forget what it's like to machine sometimes. It's amazing to have that kind of control. Like, oh, it's like I can control those atoms so amazingly accurately. It's crazy. Let's see how close that is. Oh wow, that's getting on there. That is snug. Oof, yes. I need to cut this junk off. Maybe clean this up a bit. But yeah, that's getting part way on. Okay, maybe take a tiny bit more off. Yeah, maybe I should just cut this off right now though, because I'm going to do that anyway. Well, I made short work of that thing. Yeah, don't even need to file the edges. Looks fine. I just took a tiny bit off there. Oh, wow, yeah. No wobble. It's on there good and tight. Better oil that so it doesn't do anything. 
How do I cut the keyway back in there? I don't. It's a little bit wobbly. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Should I hold it? Um, okay, and then you're gonna touch this wire to that last one. See that in that last one there? Do it over here. Wait, 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 don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Okay, just touch it real quick. You gotta turn it sideways to put it in the slot. So you wanna know how to do it? Wait, wait, wait. I don't know if that will be your control. Baby, back up. Go that way. Go that way. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, go for it. Just touch it real quick. All right. Put it on and leave it. Huh. Wait, wait, put it back on. So you got a bit of vibration, but it's not too bad. Keep, keep it in there. Push it in, push it in. No, crack it in, back up, back up. run like that and I'll see if I can get a bit of the vibration out somehow, but let that's not bad. Okay, let go. Huh. That's pretty good. Don't turn. Okay, pull the wires out. Well, that is pretty good. I think I can get, it has a little bit of vibration, but I think I can get that out by putting some tiny shims in here, you know, like a like a sliver of paper or something somewhere around there. Although even just as it is, it really doesn't vibrate very much. So I think, I think this works. So I got the motor connected to the shaft. I got the two bearings. This bearing I'm gonna to wanna to move back here so there's more clearance between the bearing and where the wood is so I can cut a fatter piece of wood. But uh, yeah, that's my, my power thing. Basically, and that, you know, that goes on there. Man. Yeah, all right. Now I'm going to figure out what these bearings will attach to, because it's not going to be this big thing down here. Man, this is going nice and smooth so far. You know, a little bit of tweaks here and there just to get some vibrations out, but I think it's already within tolerable parameters. Yeah, this is going great. Well, maybe I shouldn't speak so soon. There's still a lot more parts to make. But that is the, the most, what's the word? That's the most precision, the most precisely, you know, it's the only part with, with really high precision. Kind of the rest of a lumber mill is just, you know, making a track for it to go on. All that stuff doesn't need to be that, that exact.